three in section 2.3 we're going to talk about the product and quotient rule of derivative okay so let's begin with uh, the product rule <clears throat> now the notation I use by the way so we, remember we are familiar with this notations we have the dx of f of x which means f prime of x and I can use f prime notation so for example if I write f prime times g that means the derivative of the function times g which would be possibly another function so let's take a look at the product rule first of all okay so if begin with the product rule now the product rule goes like this I'm going to use the prime notation okay uh, but to begin with let's uh, set up the stage for this if f and g so we have two functions f and g both must be differentiable or differentiable remember differentiable that means they have derivatives and we can evaluate the derivative differentiable at x x would be some arbitrary number then so is the product okay so that is what the product rule setup is so is the product and the product f times g is what we are after the derivative of and so we want to find the derivative let's go d dx of in this case we want to do f of x times g of x and that derivative is going to be f of x times d dx of g of x and then we're going to add plus g of x times d dx of f of x okay now this notation is kind of cryptic honestly i don't like this notation myself here's a better way to at least remember this if you were to memorize it which i suggest you memorize this for your higher or higher classes in mathematics because this product rule and quotient rule they come up quite often and so for that reason i would suggest that you memorize this although we are you don't have to memorize at the time being but eventually you need to have this memorized so here is a way that actually helps me memorize this easier so if I have f times g and I want to find the derivative of that that derivative is going to be f times g prime plus g times f prime there you go this is the form that lends itself easier to memorization so derivative of the product f times g you multiply the first function times derivative of the second plus the, der the derivative of the first by the second function okay so let's take a look at actually the proof of this let's see how we can prove this because there's not much other than this couple of formulas so we have we have plenty of time to to show the proof of this so let's say I want to do f g prime now remember all derivatives have the roots in difference quotient right the very definition of derivative so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna use the difference quotient in order to prove this so that would be f at x plus h times g at x plus h minus f of x times g of x right that's by definition of the derivative okay instead of just a function we have product of two functions so we're going to call those product of two functions because they're differentiable we can write it as f of x times g of x okay so next step what i'm going to do is i'm going to say okay this is the limit now this is a creative step okay this is a, you can call it a trick because it really that's what this is there's not much tricks in that our work that we do but this one is truly a trick so in this trick we're going to insert something that's not there okay like there you go that expression wasn't there i just created that expression and then 
we're going to add its opposite so we haven't changed the fraction and uh, minus fx gx okay and then we're going to divide all of this by h of course so we have this lengthy expression now let's take the limit of the components okay so i'm going to write this as the limit as h <clears throat> approaches zero of f of x plus h times g of x plus h minus g of x divided by h another way that worked out is this i went ahead and factored this expression f at x plus h i factored it from the first two expressions so i'm just looking at these two okay and that's what that is and that's what i got for the first part plus now we're going to look at this the latter part okay the second part which is going to be plus now in the second part notice we have g of x in common right so we can actually factor g of x now this so is going to be plus g of x times and then take the limit as h goes to zero of uh, the remaining factors f of x plus h minus f of x notice we recognize this last part as a difference quotient right remember that's the difference quotient limit of the difference quotient okay so we have that and then i can close the bracket all right perfect uh, actually uh, let me just leave this out I, mean, I, I skipped one step okay let me let me not skip that step i went ahead and wrote the limit of a sum as some of the limits is what i did but i just want to group them at this point f of x plus h minus f of x in a moment it will be what i had earlier okay there you go see we broke it into two parts right in here we split it into two statements okay now we're going to do what i just erased we're going to take the limit of each part and this is going to be the limit as h goes to zero of f at x plus h so notice for this part the front part right here we have limit of a product right in here limit of a product is going to be product of limits right so that's just going to be limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h times the limit as h goes to zero of its own difference quotient right x plus h minus gx divided by h all right plus the limit of the second expression again that's the product limit of a product product of limits a limit as h goes to zero of g of x times the limit as h goes to zero of the difference quotient the part that i erased a few moments ago there it's just a moment ago i jumped a step too soon all right so there you have it now if you look at each limit so we got one two three four limits right let's take a look at each of those limits the limit as h goes to zero of this one well direct substitution that just gives us limit of f of x plus h that be that would be just f of x true that's what that part is and then if you look at this one remember to start with we assumed f and g are differentiable right if they are differentiable therefore we know this limit will exist because that's just the derivative of g but then we were told g is differentiable so we know that limit exists and we're going to write that as simply the derivative of g of x okay and likewise next to it limit of g of x is independent of h as h goes to zero that's just g of x times and the limit as h goes to zero this too is definition of the derivative of function f but we were told f was differentiable also so that means we know this limit will exist because of the hypothesis of the statement we made of this theorem so that would be ddx of just f of x and there you go and we have proved this 
uh, theorem. So in perusing prime notation, well, f of x is f. Next to it, I have g prime plus. Next to that, I have g and d dx fx is just f prime. And that is f times g prime. <clears throat> so, and there you have it. The proof is complete. So let me put a note here right away f times g prime. The derivative of the product is not f prime g prime. Okay, so be careful, please. That's not true. The derivative is the statement directly above that. Okay, so again, in words, we say the derivative of a product of two function is the function, the first function, times the derivative of the second, plus the second function times the derivative of the first. Okay, and that's the proof of our first theorem. Now we're going to look at the quotient rule here. So let me write down the quotient rule for you. Let me uh, do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so the, the quotient rule now goes like this. I'm going to use the prime notation, okay? And this is the quotient rule. It's just easier to remember that. The quotient rule goes, again, provided f and g are both differentiable, f over g prime is equal to g f prime minus f g prime divided by g squared. So that one is a bit more elaborate. Now the proof of this is also in your book, so um, you can read it. There is again a creative step in this one. Uh, and and we can actually use difference quotient to prove this theorem also. Okay, so remember the derivative of the quotient f over g is in the numerator, you multiply the denominator times derivative of the numerator minus numerator times derivative of the denominator. Okay, so we have those and then divided by square of the denominator. And that's, that's all that is. Okay, so let's take a look at some exercises now from your book. I'm going to uh, go ahead and copy the exercises and paste it here and then we'll look at them. Okay, so here are the exercises, uh, just a portion of it. I'm gonna uh, kind of copy and paste it one piece at a time so we can focus on the segment that we're working with. So let's take a look at um, a couple of these. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of them. Uh, we start with maybe something simple and then look at that one. Not that they're difficult, it's just the beginning and the ending kind of thing. The question, simple, use the product rule to find the derivative of the function. So remember the product rule again. f times g prime is f g prime plus g f prime. Okay, that's what that is. So in exercise number two, capital F of x is equal to 3x squared times x minus 1. Now we could, we could distribute 3x squared and work this as a polynomial, but let's practice product rule, okay? And here's where the product is. So in this case, I'm thinking of 3x squared as f of x and x minus 1 is acting as g. Notice both of those functions are differentiable because they're polynomial functions and all polynomial functions are differentiable over the entire domain, over the entire number line. Okay, so f prime of x therefore is, now I'm doing this, f g prime means just write the first function, here's your f, g prime is derivative of x minus 1 plus g, but g is x minus 1, times derivative f prime, which is uh, derivative of 3x squared would be 6x, right? We're using the uh, power rule of derivative. Remember from earlier section, x to the n prime is n x to the n minus 1. That's what we're using. And the next step is actually simplification, 3x squared, plus distribute from the right, 6x and x is 6x squared minus 6x, and then combine like terms, it makes it 9x squared minus 6x, 
and we are done with this one. There is a derivative. And of course, you can factor, sure, 3x, that would be 3x minus 2 in factored form. But for now, it's okay if either, either forms are okay. This expression wasn't complicated. All right, so not too bad, right? <clears throat> Let's take a look at number 6. In number 6, f of w is equal to w cubed minus w squared plus w minus 1 times w cubed. Notice I put the times there just so you see the product rule. Again, you could distribute, combine like terms, blah, blah, blah. But I'm just going to let this function be f, second one g. Both again are differentiable. So the derivative, we're going to go using our formula. First times derivative of second. Now, by the way, uh, addition is commutative, right? We're looking at here. So if somebody says, oh, you do gf prime plus fg prime, they're fine too, because they just write this one first, that one second. Addition is commutative. So, you, you know, there are there is some flexibility in writing this formula. <clears throat> as long as you multiply uh, first function by derivative of second plus second times derivative of first. You're good in any order. So I'm going to go fg prime. Well, fg prime, that's w cubed minus w squared plus w minus 1. g prime would be 3w squared. Plus, I did fg prime, now I do gf prime. Here's g, and then f prime would be derivative of uh, the first function. Uh, using the power rule, that's 3w squared minus 2w plus 1. And uh, now we can distribute from the right again. Right? Let's distribute from the right uh, and see what happens. So 3w squared times w cubed, that would be 3w fifth. Negative 3w fourth plus 3w cubed minus 3w squared. Okay. <clears throat> plus and then next I'm going to do the same thing distribute both of those and uh, then we have let's see let me get rid of all these lines okay so we get 3w fifth negative 2w fourth plus w cubed plus 6w squared negative 4w plus 2 and there you go, that long expression. Uh, let's combine like terms. So W fifth, W fifth. There is a couple of those. That makes it 6 W fifth. Then we move on to W fourth, right? W fourth, W fourth. We got 3 and 2 makes negative. 5 W fourth, W cubed, cubed. 3 and 1 more makes 4 W cubed. And then let's take a look at w squared, negative here, positive 6 there. That makes positive 3w squared. And finally, finally, the constant, I think the only constant I see is a 2, right? So we're just going to go plus 2. Again, good enough for our work. Don't worry about, like, if this, this is this factorable. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? But we are good with this segment. <clears throat> and let's look at another segment. Okay, real, real quick, by the way, folks. Uh, I went ahead and copied the problems here. But going back to the one I just did, I, I just realized I, I left this one term out. So let's put that one in there. It's just going to make this. Hold on, let me fix this. Okay, so that's 3w. That was 3w squared. And then negative 4w plus 2. Now it looks right. Okay, I'm sure most of you caught that one. Okay. So let me let me work these exercises, some of them together. Okay, let's take a look at this exercise. We're going to go right to exercise uh, number 12. Let's take a look at number 12. So in number 12, in all of these, we want to use the quotient rule to find the derivative. So the quotient rule, again, just to have it, we said f over g prime is equal to you square the denominator don't take the derivative of the denominator you just square it and then repeat the denominator 
times the other function must be prime minus f g prime. Now, subtraction is not commutative, right? 3 minus 5 doesn't equal 5 minus 3. So that means in the numerator, it makes a difference, right? It makes a difference which is first, which is second. So make sure you do this exactly the way it, it looks. Okay. So let's try number 12. In number 12, the function is f of s and that's equal to s squared minus 4 divided by s plus 1. So now individually, I know this function is a little f, but think of this as its own f, this is its own g. So in other words, we have a function that's polynomial in the numerator and one that's in the denominator. Okay, therefore f prime of s is going to be, I'm going to square the denominator. So that would be s plus 1 squared. Repeat the denominator and then times derivative of the numerator which is that. The derivative of s squared is 2s. Derivative of 4 is a constant that is 0 minus f. Again remember and when we say f we're talking about the numerator we're not talking about the original function. Okay minus the function that is in the numerator that would be s squared minus 4 times the derivative of the function in the denominator which is s plus 1 the derivative of s is 1 derivative of 1 is 0 and then let's simplify it now for difference quotients this is the derivative by the way but we always have to simplify okay so please keep that in mind we if we leave it like this that's not complete so that is not the correct answer the final answer that is but we are done with the calculus portion of this problem that was it that was the calculus the rest is all algebra so i'm just going to work the algebra now so you get to practice your algebra quite a bit in this course 2s by s is 2s squared plus 2s and then distribute the sign, you get negative s squared plus 4. And then 1 times the binomial is the binomial itself. So to carry one more step here, s plus 1 squared the bottom. 2s squared minus s squared, that is just s squared plus 2s plus 4. Okay, and we are good with exercise number 12. Now, we do look to see if uh, this polynomial is factorable, but I can tell that's not factorable. So remember the algebra rules does apply here. Negative exponents, sometimes we don't like negative exponents. Radicals in the denominator, we rationalize denominators, so the rules of algebra are still intact. Okay, let's take a look at, let me bring up another segment of the exercises and we'll take a look at that one. Okay, let's take a look at number 16. In exercise number 16, the instructions reads, find the derivative of each function in two ways, two ways. So in number 16, we have a quotient. So let's use a quotient rule first. That would be our first way. 3t to 3 halves divided by 5t to a half. Okay, so we have again a numerator, a function in the numerator, one in the denominator. The derivative of a quotient again, just to put it for you, since this new, you seen it for most of you for the first time. That's g squared, gf prime minus fg prime. Being this one. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the quotient rule now. So we're going to write f prime of t is equal to make that a long fraction line okay here's the denominator 5t to a half squared then we're going to repeat the denominator 5t to a half times derivative of the numerator 2t squared would become 4t three times three halves t to three halves minus one is a half minus and then we have derivative of the denominator, which is 5 times 1 half t to a negative a half times the numerator, which is 2t squared minus 3t to 3 halves. 
okay so i did denominator times derivative of the numerator minus derivative of the denominator times the numerator and then let's distribute now we are done with the calculus again portion of this we just have to simplify algebraically 5t to a half squared makes 25t to a half times 2 is just t distributing the numerator i get 4 times 5 that would be 20 t to 3 halves negative 3 times 3 9 times 5 that's 45 halves right 45 uh, halves t to a half times c to a half is just t negative 5 halves times 2 is just 5 and then t to a negative half t squared is t to three halves, right? Okay, and then positive five times three, that would be 15 halves. And then t to negative half plus three halves, that's just t, okay? Now we can combine like terms and let's see, t to three halves, so we have 20 minus Five, that makes it 15 t to 3 halves and then uh, oh that's t to the first okay sorry not t to t I meant to put a one there which is just t okay now 45 halves plus 15 halves that would be negative 30 halves that's negative 15 right t divided by 25 t and then we can individually divide by the denominator 15 20 fifth divide the fives out so that would be what three fifths that's three fifths t to a half t to three halves divided by t that's like t to three halves minus one that's t to a half and then negative 15 20 fifths again divide the three the fives out the 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 fives out we get three fifths and the t's just divide out and then we can factor the three fifths out and that's just going to be square root of t minus one or you can write it as t to a half okay so there you go that was exercise number 16. let's take a look at uh, another one okay before we actually look at another one let's because the problem remember asks us to do this two different ways so let's do this a second way so i'm just going to call this method two the first one was our first method so for the second method we're going to actually um, here's a couple of things i could do i can divide by the denominator each of those separately or i can flip the denominator and write it as product numerator times a denominator and use the product rule i'm going to do it the easier way i'm going to divide each of those by the denominator so f of t is t squared divided by t to a half okay well again t squared by t to a half is going to be t squared times t to negative one half and that's t to three halves so that's t to three halves and then negative three fifths t to three halves divided by t to a half subtract a half from three halves you get one there i'm just gonna find that derivative is a heck of a lot easier than doing the product rule that's two fifths bring three halves to front subtract one from three halves we get just uh, one half negative three fifths derivative of t is one and that's a constant multiple times one and then like before i can uh, factor cross the twos out factor three fifths that's three fifths t to a half minus one that's exactly what we got or uh yeah oh actually yeah that's exactly what we have here i was looking at the square root one without one with the square root so they're the same thing and that would be the second method now we can look at another exercise okay so i have circled the ones i thought would be good to work on um, let's begin with number 20. so in exercise number 20 we have f of x is equal to 
root x minus 1 divided by root x plus 1. Now looking ahead, because I know I'm going to have to take the derivative of square roots, right? Both top and the bottom. So in order to do that, I need to rewrite it in exponent, rational exponent form. So might as well do that from the start. And there you go. This is just so I have it in case I need to find the derivative. I can do it this way. So let's do the quotient rule with this one. If prime of x is equal to, I'm going to write the denominator, square the denominator. Remember, I have an option to use this form or that form. So for now, I'm just going to stay with the original form because I'm not manipulating anything yet. Now, repeat the denominator. I'm going to repeat it as x to a half plus 1. So I'm opting to go with that form. Why? Because I'm about to take the derivative of the numerator, and you'll see why. Now, this is the numerator. The derivative of x to a half is going to be 1 half x to negative a half. You see, that's the advantage of writing it with fractional exponents. Derivative of negative 1 is 0, so we don't need that one. Uh, minus the derivative of the denominator. Now I'm going with this version of the denominator. That's going to be 1 half x to negative a half. Derivative of 1 is 0 times the numerator the fractional form of the numerator. And you can see now it's a lot easier to work this. Distribute uh, to x to negative a half times x to a half. Of course, the one half is in front. That's just one half because x to negative a half times x to a half is x to zero. Okay. And let me write that x to zero, which is one plus one half x to negative a half negative one half x to a negative a half x to a half is x to zero plus one half x to negative a half okay and both of those are constants they add to zero the denominator i'm going to leave it you don't need to square the binomial in the denominator we're just going to keep it the way it is and in fact, here is root x plus 1 squared. Okay, let me bring them closer together. Plus 1 squared. Now, in the numerator, I have 1 half x to negative a half and half x to negative a half. That just makes it what? Um, uh, 1 half uh, x to 0, right? Well, uh, combine. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm adding. I'm not multiplying. A half. A half of that. Th those are like terms. In other words, so that's just x to negative a half. Make a long story short. Now, um, in order to get rid of negative exponents, I'm going to multiply top by x to a half, bottom by x to a half, and the numerator now makes one. And in the denominator, I'm going to go square root of x times root x plus one squared. And there we have it. That will be the final answer for number 20. Let's take a look at number 24. In number 24, f of r is equal to parentheses 2r plus 1 times r minus 3 divided by 3r plus 1. Now, Again, we're going to do the quotient rule. Note in the numerator of number 24, we have a product. So we're going to use product rule when it's time to find that derivative of the numerator. So that means I need to have this long fraction line. Okay, so we're going to repeat the denominator times the derivative now of the numerator. Remember, in the numerator, it's its own product, f times g. And then we know that using the product rule, f times g prime is f g prime plus g f prime. So that's what we're going to do. Derivative, so first times derivative of second. So that's going to be 2r plus 1. Derivative of second is 1 plus g, that's r minus 3, times derivative of first, which is 2, and that's just the derivative of the numerator, minus, we're applying quotient rule, minus 
the derivative of the denominator, that's the derivative of 3r plus 1, which is 3, times the numerator, which is 2r plus 1, times r minus 3. Okay, divided by square the denominator, we get 3r plus 1 squared. All right, and then uh, we're going to do this now, 3r plus 1, and uh, let's see, we're gonna work out the inside the bracket, 2r plus 1, and then distribute 2 to r minus 3, we get 2r minus 6, right? Negative 3 times, uh, I'm gonna have to uh, foil this thing out, right? Yeah, let's so let's foil it because we eventually have to combine like terms. That's two r squared negative six r plus r minus three. All of that. I'm trying to stay away from squaring the denominator. Okay, so that looks good so far. And uh, let's see. So I'm gonna combine like terms now inside parentheses. 2r, 2r makes 4r, 1 minus 6 is negative 5, and then negative 3 inside, uh, distribute 3 times 2, I get negative 6r squared, 6r, negative 6r and r is negative 5 times negative 3, positive 15r, negative times negative is positive 9, divided by 3r plus 1 squared. Okay. And then we're going to foil on the left, we get 3 times 4, that's 12r squared, negative 15r, plus 4r minus 5, negative 6r squared, plus 15r, plus 9, divided by the denominator. Okay. Now, like terms, 12r squared, negative 6r squared, that's 6r squared, 15r and 15r, cross out, add to 0, they're opposites, plus 4r, and then 9 minus 5 is positive 4, divided by 3r plus 1 quantity squared. Okay, and that should be pretty much it for this was exercise number 24. Right now, one thing we could do is I guess we could uh, factor it too. Why not? Let's do that because that's what they tell us in algebra, right? Everything must be in factored form. So, 2 that makes it 3r squared plus 2r plus 2 divided by the denominator 3r plus 1 squared. And there we have it. So, we are done with number 24. Okay, number 24, we're good with that. Let's take a look at number 26. Number 26, this one. 1 plus 1 over x over 1 minus 1 over x. Okay, so in number 26, we have f of x is 1 plus 1 over x over 1 minus 1 over x. Now, just to make sure I copied it right. Uh, yep. Well, they say y, but that's f of x. Okay. So in this case, y prime. Now, before we actually do this, let's make it easier. What do you say? Because we have a complex fraction, this is going to be messy. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by x. Makes it a lot easier. That's just going to be x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. See how simple it got? So let's do that. <clears throat> Otherwise, again, we have to deal with derivative of all these uh, 1 over x's throughout the work. So let's now uh, we're going to do the quotient rule. The quotient rule is going to be fairly easy, right? Uh, so f prime x or y prime in this case because they call this to be y is equal to we're going to square the denominator repeat the denominator times derivative of the numerator derivative of x is 1 minus 
the numerator times derivative of denominator, derivative of x is 1. Derivative of negative 1 here, that's 0. Okay, so let's simplify now. We have x minus 1 minus x minus 1 over the square of the denominator. Those cross out and we get negative 2 divided by x minus 1 squared. So it looked, it looked bad, but it's really not as bad as it looks. That's number 26. Let's do number 30. In number 30, um, we have g of t. g of t is a t squared over t squared plus b. Now we're told a and b are constants. 2, 5, 7, whatever. So we take the derivative with respect to the variable. The variable is t. Okay, so a t squared over t squared plus b. a t squared over t squared plus b, and this would be g of t. And this was exercise number 30. Okay, so this is number 30. Okay, g prime t. We're going to square the denominator. That's going to be t squared plus b squared. Repeat the denominator. Now, derivative of the numerator. Derivative of t squared is 2t. So it's going to be 2at minus. Repeat the numerator times derivative of the denominator. Derivative of t squared is 2t. And derivative of b is 0. Because we were told a, b are constants constants there you go we're told that and now let's simplify it so distribute um, we're gonna get uh, 2 a t cubed plus 2 a b t minus 2 a t cubed over the square of the denominator t squared plus b squared okay and uh, for this one there are like terms interesting there you go those turn, those turn out to be like terms so all we have is 2abt mm, it's going to be 2abt divided by the denominator there and that's the answer to this one okay so we did a reasonable number now <clears throat> let's take a look at these let me enlarge these and then we'll look at these all right in exercise number 38 the question is find the point or points on the graph of f where the tangent line is horizontal okay so whatever the graph of this thing looks like the points where the tangent line is horizontal. Now let's say on the graph, I have a graph like this. Place where tangent line is horizontal, it could be here, or it could be here. There's no way it could be horizontal here or here, right? So tangent line horizontal, that means the slope of the line is zero, true? So whatever the graph of this turns out to be, we need to find the slope of the tangent at any point. Now remember, that means the derivative. So slope of the tangent is going to be f prime x. That's, that's how we define derivative of the function to be, is the slope of the tangent line at any point. So for this, I need to find the derivative of um, f of x. So we're going to use the quotient rule. That's x plus 1 squared. And then repeat the denominator, right? It's, uh, x squared plus 1 times derivative of the numerator is 1 minus uh, numerator times derivative of the denominator is just 2x. And note, by the way, the domain of this function, x, is all real numbers because there is no way the denominator can be 0 because it's x squared. Define this derivative now. This is going to equal to x squared plus 1 squared. In the numerator, we're going to have simply x squared plus 1 minus 2x squared, and the numerator becomes 1 minus x squared, 
over the denominator 1 plus x squared squared now in order for this to be 0 we need to set it equal to 0 and in a fraction in a fraction the only way a fraction can be 0 is if the numerator is 0 and denominator it is not so that means I just need to set 1, min, 1 minus x squared equal to 0 and from this 1 equal x squared and we can take the square root of both sides and x becomes plus minus 1 okay now plus minus 1 so there are two points actually where the tangent line is horizontal for this expression and uh, now I need to plug in for when x is 1 so f at 1 is going to equal 2 1 over 1 squared plus 1 or 1 half so one point is 1 and 1 half and the other one is f at negative 1 so that's going to be negative 1 over negative 1 squared plus 1 which is negative 1 half okay so the points on the graph has a point uh, the other one is negative 1 and negative 1 half okay and there we answer this question uh, let's take a look at number 40 in number 40 is kind of like the one we just did except we don't want the tangent to be horizontal they give you some tangent uh, line the slope of a tangent they want it to be a specific value okay so the question again reads find the point or points on the graph of the function at which the tangent line has indicated slope uh, and this is again f of s 2s plus 1 over s minus 2 okay f of s 2s plus 1 over s minus 2 and this was exercise number 40 and we want the slope to be negative 1 fifth okay so first we got to find the slope right f prime s which is equal to the slope is going to be using the quotient rule we have s minus 2 squared and repeat the denominator times derivative of the numerator minus derivative of the denominator is 1 times the numerator okay and then this is going to give us that's going to be equal to Here's the denominator, s minus 2 squared, and the numerator will be 2s minus 4, negative 2s minus 1, and then the 2s's cross out, so this is negative 5 over the denominator, which is s minus 2 squared. 5 and s, not a good choice of variable on this one, okay, because on mine anyway, they look the same. All right, now we're going to set this again equal to this uh, desired slope was negative one fifth. Okay, now to solve this, we're going to cross multiply. When we cross them, we get s minus 2 squared is equal to 25. Then taking the square root of both sides, s minus 2 would be plus minus 5. And we're going to add 2 to both sides, so it's plus minus 5 plus 2. Once we get 7 and negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. And therefore, those are the s values. So uh, f of negative 3, right? f of negative 3 is going to be, i um, just going to plug in here, negative 3 into the function. 2s plus 1, that's 2 times negative 3 plus 1 over uh, s minus 2 which is negative 3 minus 2 right and that's going to make this negative 5 over negative 5 or 1 so one point is negative 3 and 1 now the other point is going to be when um, s is 7 right so I'm going to do f at 7 and that's going to be 2 times 7 plus 1 divided by 7 minus 2 that's 15 fifths or 3 so the other point is going to be uh, 7 comma 3 
those are the two points where the tangent line is going to have a slope negative one fifth okay let me move this segment lower and we'll do a couple of more okay let's take a look at number 58 in number 58 we are given a function again y is equal to x squared times x plus 1 over x and the question now we want to find y double prime means the second derivative so let's begin with the first derivative first of all y prime i'm going to use the product rule here okay so the product rule again remember f times g prime is f prime g plus gf prime okay so let's do that we're going to do derivative of first by second so that's going to be 2x times x plus 1 over x plus first times derivative of second derivative of x is 1 derivative of 1 over x well let's look that up here 1 over x is x to negative 1 derivative of that is negative negative 1 x to negative 2 so that's uh, that's what that is now you could use quotient rule with 1 over x I don't recommend it this is easier uh, so I'm just gonna use the power rule of derivatives negative x to negative 2 and you can see because I'm about to distribute and it works out nicer when in distribution we're going to get rid of that negative exponent in a moment all right let's distribute so we get 2x times x that's 2x squared 2x times 1 over x that's just 2 plus x squared and x squared times x to negative 2 is just 1 right because you get x to 0 which is 1 so that's why all right um, and then we can combine like terms that would be 3x squared plus 1 so that's my first derivative now to find the second derivative we take the derivative of the first derivative so it's like derivative of a derivative therefore y double prime is going to be let me do that down here y double prime is going to be 6x and that's it pretty easy now huh? because we have a polynomial function that's why it's that one turns out to be really easy so number 58 is done and uh, now you're doing or uh, you could try doing number 61 okay and uh, number 61 is kind of like the one that you're doing so let me uh, I mean number 62 number 62 61 is the one you might be interested in let me do number 62 in exercise number 62 we are given this function um, I'll do uh, part uh, a for now okay so the question reads in number 62 like yours it reads um, to find in part a f triple prime at 0 that means the third derivative at 0 if f of x is equal to 8x to the seventh uh, negative 6x to the fifth plus 4x cubed minus x so we have a polynomial function that's part a and in part b mm, the question asks us to find y triple prime evaluated at x equal one that's how we read that this line means evaluated or just evaluate okay so we want to evaluate y triple prime at x equals one or y triple prime evaluated at x equals one if this time y is equal to x to negative one okay so let's do that again this mimics number 61 see number 61 is very similar to what I'm doing here okay so for part a in part a we're going to have f prime of x is equal to 8 by 7 that's 56 x 6 negative 5 by 6 30 x 4 plus 4 times 3 is 12 x squared minus 1 f double prime x is going to be 6 times 56 is 336 x to the fifth uh, 
x to the fifth, and then um, minus 4 times 30, 120x cubed plus 24x. If triple prime x is going to be 336 times 5 is going to be 1680 x to the fourth minus 3 times 120 will be 360 x squared plus 24 okay and they want to evaluate f triple prime at a zero so that's that's just when you plug in zero here plug in zero here so the first two terms become zero that's just 24 and there you go when you plug in a zero for x that's pretty easy right let's do part b of this one in part b y triple prime so this time you're told y is equal to x to negative one so y prime would be negative x to negative two and y double prime would be negative of negative two x negative three which is two x negative three and we can write the third derivative now y triple prime is going to be negative three times two x to negative three minus one is negative four so that's going to be negative six x to negative four now y triple prime evaluated at x equals one means you plug in uh, a one in for x and one to any power is one right one to zero is one one to positive negative exponents are one so the answer is going to be negative six on this one okay so hopefully you followed everything we did we did quite a few exercises in this section so please review and make sure that everything i did looks good hopefully everything i did looked okay and with that we are done with section 2.3 the product and quotient